Why do you think it was so easy to exterminate your people? Your weakness. I saw it. Every day I saw it. Every one of them thinking only of how to avoid being flogged or kicked or killed. Everyone thinking only of themselves. Why do you think it only took four soldiers to lead a thousand people to the gas chambers? Because not one out of thousands had the courage to resist. Not one would sacrifice himself. Not even when we took their children away. So I knew then that you people had no right to live. Everyone thinking only of themselves. Everyone thinking only of themselves. Because not one out of thousands had the courage to resist. Not one would sacrifice himself. Not even when we took their children away. Because not one out of thousands had the courage to resist. Not one would sacrifice himself. Not even when we took their children away. Salute, everyone. Brothers and sisters, comrades. I wanted to think a minute. I want you to think a minute. That's why I played that video. But before we go any further, I want to share with you also the words of the leader of that German who was speaking, that German soldier who was speaking in that video. Let me share something with you. I have the computer here. It's a quote by his leader, who's Hitler. Hitler said, demoralize the enemy from within by surprise, terror, sabotage, assassination. That is the war of the future. Now before I go into that, of course, I haven't been on Facebook in a couple of months. Got a lot of messages, even some calls of people asking, what happened to you? Well, you disappeared. Uh, I said, no, I'm, I'm here. I'm working. You just don't see me on Facebook. Brothers and sisters, I'm too serious to be taken as something to spectate. I'm not here for you to keep watching me, listening to me around my mouth. It's not what I'm here for. I'm here to actually affect change. I know for us in America, our, or what we think our solution is, part of that solution is, is making noise, getting attention, kicking knowledge, speaking, a whole bunch of speaking. Our heroes are not known for liberating anything. Our heroes are known for speaking very well. And that's something to be applauded. I love the great speaking by our heroes of the past, our present leadership, great speakers. But when you look at peoples who have been liberated, most of us are biblical people. We follow the Bible, come from Christian backgrounds. The biggest liberator of the Bible was considered to be Moses. If you look at the story of Moses, he was a terrible speaker. But it was a leader of a liberation movement. Now let's go to regular history outside of the biblical context. Ho Chi Minh, the Vietnamese liberator. Have you ever heard of any of his speeches? Was he known to be a great speaker? 
was Robert Mugabe, was his claim to fame being a great speaker, was his claim to fame liberating the people of Zimbabwe? Is Fidel Castro's claim to fame being a good speaker, or was, or was his claim to fame liberating the people of Cuba from dictatorship? Was Dessalines and Toussaint Leovich's claim to fame speaking, or was it liberating their people? You know them because they liberated their people. None of us even heard them speak. Some of those people speak. Most of them speak. But for us in America, our leadership is defined as those who can speak good, those who can draw crowds. Haven't liberated one thing. One street, one block, one neighborhood, one nothing. Yet these are heroes. Our biggest and strongest leader who we look to today is Minister Farrakhan. I love the brother. I love hearing him speak. But he's just known for speaking, hasn't liberated one thing. And those who follow behind him, I hope he lives forever, but those who follow behind him, they're just looking for the next great speaker. Not liberation. So no, I haven't been on Facebook doing these lives because we're really organizing to take over, to liberate ourselves here in Detroit, to assert our right of self-determination. And that requires a lot of serious organizing, not just being on Facebook talking to an audience that probably won't even participate. When you're dealing with return on investment, you invest your time and your money into something that's going to give a return. The video of our event a year or so ago had over 16,000 views. Hundreds and hundreds of comments, people saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. About four people showed up from that crowd that was watching the video. So why should I be on here using time to talk to people who are not going to respond. But I understand your lack of response. So I don't fault you, you've been worked on. We have been worked on. So when real liberation comes, nobody wants to face those giants. The children of Israel had God with them and only two people were willing to face giants. So, of course, I don't expect our people, even those who call ourselves revolutionaries, I don't expect you to be willing to face giants. We're dealing with the biggest giant in the history of the world. Our enemy is the biggest giant in the history of the world. And our psychological damage is to the point where we're barely breathing. We're barely moving. So a response to jump up in the name of liberation with the real action, I, I don't expect many of us to respond. I've learned my lesson. So that's why I've not been on Facebook. But I'm talking here today because I'm going to add out today. I'm going to add out today. This will be my last time talking. We got a week. We're a week away from July the 4th. Where a few of us, or several or so of us, would do like the Founding Fathers did. We would declare our independence and assert ourselves, our self-determination here in Detroit. We're not marching about it. We're not talking about it. We're hitting the streets and we're taking over, as we have a right to. This is not no sedition or anything. The law says we can do it, but we just are too demoralized as a people to even try it. Raise your hand if you're, raise your hand if you're demoralized. Of course, none of us raise our hand. Look, we're not, I'm not demoralized, that's what you're saying. Let me read the definition of demoralization. Demoralization is the state of mind of a person deprived of spirit 
or courage, disheartened, bewildered, and thrown into disorder or confusion. Dictionary.com reads, demoralized as a verb, to cause, to turn, oh, excuse me, demoralization. Cambridge Dictionary, the process of making someone lose confidence, enthusiasm, and hope. Now Dictionary. Dot com. To deprive a person or persons of spirit, courage, Discipline, etc. Destroy the morale of. Now, in Wikipedia, dealing with warfare, you have the word demoralization also. Demoralization is, in a context of warfare, national security and law enforcement, a process in psychological warfare with the objective to erode morale among enemy combatants and or non-combatants. Non that can encourage them to retreat, surrender, or defect rather than defeating them in combat. How many of us vote? How many of us know that the government is no good? So you know that the government is no good. So you know it's an enemy. But as it says, you defected to the other side, you retreated, and you participated with the enemy by voting inside that system. That's demoralization. You are demoralized. To those who may have escaped that context or that field of definition. If I said this, brothers and sisters, the law says, especially for black people, we have a right of self-determination, meaning we have a right that we were ne never afforded after slavery to stand up where we are and say, we don't like the way we're being governed. We declare our independence. We're going to govern ourselves from here. We're going to take over from here. That's the law. The law says you can do that. How many of us are going to say, no, they ain't going to let us do that. You see what they did to move in Philadelphia. You see what they did to Black Wall Street in Tulsa, Oklahoma. You see what they did to so-and-so who tried to stand up. You're demoralized. So now you fit that definition, that context. As Hitler says, as we just read, he said, demoralize the enemy from within by surprise, terror, sabotage, assassination. That is the war of the future. Because some of our leaders got assassinated. Some of our organizations got sabotaged. Now you're scared to even try it. That means you're demoralized. Now again, raise your hand if you suffer from demoralization. That's the only reason if their own law says, look, you have a right to simply stand up and take over. If you don't feel you're being governed right, if you don't feel safe and happy, black people, assert your right of self-determination. Not say we want self-determination. You already have self-determination. Assert it. You have the right to stand up and say, look, we're governing ourselves from here. We are the police force or here is our police force. These streets, this community, this block, these several blocks. Or if we got enough people, this whole city is ours now, we're controlling it. We have a right to do that. That's the law. But I know those who even say, oh, okay, you're right, but they're going to do this to us. Demoralization. As the video I just played says, you're not even willing to stand up while they march you one by one to death. 
why they assassinate us one by one, why the police terrorize, kill us one by one, why they wrongfully convict us one by one. We won't do anything about it. Instead of standing up as, as a whole, put our life on the line and say, look, it ends here. Because your life going to be taken anyway. Your lousy life. You don't have a life. If you kick the horse and the horse kick you back, that's a live horse. If you kick the horse and it don't even respond, it's dead. They kick us every day we don't respond. They wrongfully convict us every hour on the weekday during court sessions all over America. We don't respond. They assassinate our leaders. We don't respond. And we even participate in the same system. We know that assassinated our leaders. Police murder us. All we do is march, scream, black power, no justice, no peace. As if we're waiting for the enemy to give you some peace instead of giving it to ourselves. Now, who's, who's going to stand and just assert their right? You have the right to freedom of speech. You don't march and say, please give us freedom of speech. You just speak freely because you got that freedom of speech. Those of us who have been open carrying, doing our little formations with guns. You didn't have a march before you did that so you can carry the gun. You know, you say we have a right to open carry, so you carry it. Now, if it says you have a right to self-determination, meaning you have a right to just stand up as the founding fathers did and just govern it themselves. Say, if you try to stop us from governing, then, we, then it's war. To my brothers and sisters, we're having a conference next week in Chicago, Afro-descendant nation under Silas Muhammad. Part of the title says, Defending Self-Determination. See, we got some errors here and there. You don't defend rights. You assert your right, and if somebody tries to stop it, you defend yourself in that assertion of your right. But because we got a context of this big bad wolf that we fear, we won't assert ourselves. So now that enemy could come back at us and say, we haven't been abusing your right of self-determination. What is, what is that to defend? You have never asserted it. Do y'all understand? Why y'all? This is not our fault. The police killing, keep killing your members of your community. I said you have a right to stand up and get rid of police. You just didn't do it. So whose fault is it at the end of the day? It's not the system's fault. The system, number one in law, it says if you don't like it, you can abolish it and govern yourselves. Number one, the number one principle in national law and the number one principle in international law. So if you don't agree to police, why are you not replacing the police? You go in the middle of nowhere with a bunch of guns and march up and down the street like you're bad, but the police still remains in place. And I love you, brothers. You just don't know, but your leadership is guiding you down the wrong world road, building these golden calves, as they were called in the Bible. A golden calf, something that looks good. Looks good to an oppressed people, but it has no potential of liberating you because that's not the intention. The intention is to put on a show, to grandstand. You just grandstand in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Did you take over Tulsa and give those people justice? No, you didn't. Did you take over Stone Mountain and give those people justice? No, you did. Did you take over Louisville, Kentucky and give those people justice and get justice for Brianna? No, you didn't. We're putting on shows. This is out of love, family. I know you all don't know better. We don't know better. I was part of that myself. Didn't know what to do. So at an early age, a young age, I didn't know what to do, but I, I, I recognized game of leadership, of so-called leadership. So I said, forget it. I'm leaving. I moved to Africa. That's where I spent most of my adulthood at. Luckily, while there, I learned real liberation from li real liberators, not real speakers, not real formation, not real gatherers, not toy soldiers. And this is out of love. This is tough love today because we got to do better. 
We've got to do better. When we say, look, help us come liberate Detroit. So nobody shows up. I say, come, let's put on a formation. There's going to be cameras that we're going to look tough marching down the street with guns. Then you go back to your separate homes. Everybody's here. Who all believes there's a pandemic? Who believes that? If you believe that, what are you doing about it? What's your protection against that? What they have planned. Your only protection is to come together and take over some territory. That's your only protection. Not to kick knowledge about it all the time on Facebook and on social media. What you going to do about it? Got these talking heads doing videos. Nice videos now. They're kicking that knowledge. But what's the solution? Yeah, I know they're doing this, they're doing that. Well, I want to hear about the 5,789th person they killed when I didn't do nothing about the 5,878th person or whatever they killed. I'm not going to do nothing about the next one besides talk about it again. We got to get real. We got to get real. There's nothing else left to do besides simply assert ourselves. All you big and bad revolutionaries or just black men in general, you mean to tell me those founding fathers had more courage than us? Actually, they did. Yeah, they wore wigs and tight pants up to their knees. But they had more courage than we do against the biggest empire in history at that time, the British Empire. They stood up and said, look, we have a right to self-determination. We have a right to govern ourselves. So we're going to declare our independence. We're going to govern ourselves from here. Now, if they did it, and then they put it inside the principles, the very principles of the existence of the law of this country, and this country itself is the right of self-determination. But we don't exercise it. We don't assert it. And when somebody like myself says assert it, hey, he's crazy. He's too radical. He's going to get everybody killed. He's already getting killed. You're going to get everybody killed by doing nothing. As that ex-German soldier said in the video there, you do nothing because you worried about your single miserable life while they march you one by one to the grave. On July the 4th here in Detroit, we're just standing up and saying, look, enough is enough. That's why I got to do this video. Because it's it from there. There's no turning back after next week. I won't be on these videos anymore. Unless it's as a liberated person. Not as a person talking about liberation. This is too serious. We're dying. Those of us who are in the struggle, we come in the struggle at a young age, energetic, because we heard a great speech. We thought somebody that was speaking was really about that life. Fifty years later, we owe, can't even hold the gun, can't even barely lift our fists up to say black power. Because somebody then drained us with these useless activities. Convention after convention after convention. March after march, gathering after gathering. And as it says in the Bible, in the first chapter of Isaiah, God says, who authorized these useless gatherings? I didn't authorize these useless gatherings. It said, learn to do right and go out and defend and liberate the oppressed. That's what it says. Even says in the same chapter, I don't even hear your prayers anymore. So get off your knees. Get out of these gatherings. Unless that gathering is to take over. There's only one order in the Bible, and that was to possess the territory. That's always been the only order throughout the Bible. There's no orders about marching and giving speeches and having formations. When the Israelites did a formation, somebody was going down. 
another people was going down. We went doing no formation and going back home. We got to get serious. We got to get serious. Do you love yourself? Do you love your people? Do you really want to be liberated, people? Do you value your little miserable life above the life of all of us? There's no such thing as one life without the rest of us. So we're welcoming everybody to Detroit. We'll be here July the 4th. We're taking over this city. We're taking it over, as we have a right to. This is not sedition. We have a right. It says, look, if you want to assert, you have a right of self-determination. If you don't agree with the government, stand up and assert yourself and govern yourself. So we would do just that. We would do just that. So if anybody is serious, if there are any serious people out there, you're welcome to join us. We encourage you. We, we need all hands on deck. We need all real warriors. Stop following behind these clowns, because that's what they are, clowns. They're leading you into being a clown. Toy soldiers. That's what the world looks at, at, at you as, the real liberators. That's what they was calling me as well when I first went to Africa and started sitting at the table with real, real liberators. To y'all some real clowns over there in America thinking that's going to get y'all free. And I used to argue with them. And so I had to look back and say, yes, I was being a real clown and those who are doing it are being clowns as well. Unknowingly, we're sincere clowns. But the leadership, they are not sincere. They're just fearful leaders of a circus. What solution do we have, Nation of Islam? What solution do we have, Black Panther Party, New Black Panther Party? What solution do we have, whatever group you are? What solution do we have? What actions are we taking? When was your organization started? You're going to be here another 60 years, another 90 years, another 30 something years? Doing the same thing and achieving the same thing and you're, while your people are dying or by then won't even be in existence according to their plan? When the law says itself, stand up and do something about it. Stop blaming the enemy. Stop. He's free of blame. The white man is free of blame. He wrote himself, if you don't like it, stand up and assert your self-determination. He didn't write in his book, oh, just come beg us for, for mercy. Because he don't do that. The white man does not beg anybody for mercy. If he do, he might ask them for mercy one time, and after that, he's coming for their head. He didn't write in the law, oh, just keep on marching. He doesn't say in the law to keep watching your people get assassinated while you march, while you petition, while you ask others. For some of us, we depend, we're going to the United Nations trying to ask somebody else to stop somebody from whooping us, from killing us, from raping us. If I see somebody raping my daughter, I'm not going to wait for somebody else to come and stop somebody. I don't care if it's 50 of them. I'm going to try to stop them myself. So why are we asking other nations to come and intervene for us when we should intervene for ourselves? Read your history. Who intervened for other people? God himself said he was walking with the children of Israel. He still didn't even intervene. They had to fight themselves. So what do we look like thinking something going to come and help us out? And depending on something to help us out while we die every day. While we're wrongfully convicted every day. We suffer in these prisons, spending year after year after year after year, rottening, rotting in prison while we're waiting on you with your little protest every year, every so often. It's time now. I'm just airing it out. I'm just airing it out, brothers and sisters. It's time. We got to stand up. We got to stand up and do something right now. Right now. We don't have any more time to waste. They planning on us right now. You got to be vaccinated to go to school. You got to be vaccinated to go to work. You have to be vaccinated to go out in the public. 
Your only choice is to become one community on a territory that you control. It's the only way out. As the scriptures say, if you don't obey God's direction or instruction, you're going to be forced to by the enemy. The enemy will serve the purpose to bring you together because he's going to murder you to the extent that you have to. But by then, there will only be few of you left. We're going to let it get to that extent. We're going to let it get to the extent where one of us, we trapped in the middle of Wisconsin or somewhere. So, oh, I can't get to the comrades. You isolated on this side of the city. Somebody isolated on that side while the enemy has moved in and blocked everything off. You're going to wait for that. Let's stop being such a pitiful people. Let's believe in the God that we claim we believe in. Because right now, I only see one God that most of us believe in, and that's the white man. You fear him. You fear him like you should fear God. You say you believe in God, but when we talk about what we're doing, first thing you talk about, he ain't going to let us do that. Yeah, it's righteous, but he ain't going to let If it's righteous and you think you believe in a God, so you mean this man is more powerful than your God? Yes, you do believe that. I don't care how many times you pray to Allah. Care how many times you pray to Jesus, pray to God, pray to Yahweh. You fear this man, this white man is your God. There's no God but a white man. You won't stand with us because you fear him. Even though he himself says, gives you orders or directions or laws to do what you do, to do what we're proposing to do. And you're still scared because you fear. So please, let's develop our faith. If we say we believe in God, develop our, let's get some real faith in God. Christians, Jesus said you'd be persecuted by the rulers. Why are none of our Christians being persecuted? Because none of us are going against the ruler. Muslims, we're not going against the ruler. We're participating. Our biggest leader we have voted. Voted. When I say biggest leader, I, I got to call out names, man. I mean, this is out of love. But because it broke my heart when Farrakhan said he voted for Obama. Then Obama turned around and killed the man that get, loaned them the money to get the mosque in Chicago, Gaddafi. But yet you part of a nation of Islam yourself, but you're voting. That means you don't have faith that you're going to be a nation, that you are a real nation. So you vote for Pharaoh's nation. As Pharaoh turns around and kills the man who gave you the money to buy your mosque, who loaned you the money. Demoralization. We don't, have, we don't really believe what we say we believe. This is out of love. It's real talk. Care about offending none of you because you ain't going to do nothing anyway. You might come hurt me. I don't care if you hurt me, so what? Won't put one finger on the enemy. Ready to hurt Malik Zulu Shabazz for writing a book. Because he thought it might say something about Farrakhan. Yet the white man talk about Farrakhan like a dog every day. Kick him off social media. We're pitiful people. That mean, that's, like I said, that means that Allah is not your God. That white man is your God. We don't submit the will to ourselves, to Allah, to represent the people of God. Our, our will is submitted to the white man, to his system, to a devilish, satanic system that murders you daily. I'm not going to keep going on. I just wanted to air everything out. We're here. We're in Detroit. Next week is it's happening. We have to do what we have to do. There's nothing left to do. We done did it all. What new is going to come out of what we have been doing already? If nothing else has already come out of it, besides the more, more con afflictions, more abuse, we ought to come to the same conclusion the founding fathers of America came to in 1776 on July the 4th. They said, hey, the boycott and all of this stuff is not going to work for us. We're just going to declare our independence, assert our right of self-determination, and rule ourselves. Can we do the same thing? They say we have the right to do it. Will we do it? Or will we continue on as victims? 
toy soldiers marching in place. Only soldiers on earth that would just gather and march in place without a territory of their own. Without even trying to take a territory of our own. We march on somebody else's territory. Then go home to be victimized by those same people. Are we going to continue along that path? Or are we going to do something real? I love you all, brothers and sisters. That's why we do what we do. That's why I do what I do. Just out of love. I'm not on here to be just talking. For you to be listening to me and then... Flick it off, maybe clap your hand, pump your fist a little bit. Then I never see you on the battlefield alongside me. And I'm, I'm saying we're going to war and start shooting up stuff. I said, but you got to stand up and assert our right. Say, look, we run this. To my people here in Detroit, all our groups here, Nation of Islam here. I know, I know you, got, you, all, you all are friends. You got contracts and all kinds of stuff with the government. But come back to the right side. Come to the right side. New River Detroit, beautiful young group who are doing, they have great energy. I love them. Love the leader, and those who were there from the beginning and those who are there now with New River Detroit. Let's go beyond chanting whose streets, our streets. Let's really take these streets. Let's take them over. Let's go beyond saying all power to the people. Let's prove that all power to the people. We know what the people want, so let's represent the people. And prove that all power is to the people. To all the individuals here in Detroit who aspire for justice. Let's stand up. As a council to rule this, run this thing. Not saying I'm your leader, somebody else your leader. We're a council. We're going to help usher our people into a better life. That's what we're saying. Not trying to be no ruler, no big leader over anybody. We just want to be free. And I know what we have to do to be free. The same thing everybody else has done. I'm not creating nothing out of my head. This is what everybody does to get free. They just assert their right and fight like men against anybody who tries to stop them from asserting their right. Name a liberated country that didn't do that. It's our time. We're not going to remain oppressed forever. It got to start somewhere. Detroit is that place where it's going to start. If you can, participate. If you can be here, be here. If you're already here in Detroit, stand up. To my Morris brothers here in Detroit, stand up. To indigenous people, you say you got jurisdiction. Prove you have jurisdiction. Don't file no paperwork, then let them come and abuse you. Like they did at Queen Mother's, uh, uh, the parade, a couple of weeks or so ago. Before the parade began, my Moorish and my indigenous brothers were talking big, saying how they declared their status and corrected their status, and they have jurisdiction, and they control the sh everything, and they got their own nationality. Then as the parade was proceeding, uh, several police came and stopped it and locked the leader of the parade up. Improved who really had jurisdictional control. A few police versus all the Moors and indigenous and those groups that were out there. I love you, brothers. Let's really show that we have jurisdiction. Let's really show that we have rights by asserting those rights and fighting like men against anybody who tries to stop us from asserting our rights. Period. No more fooling around with our people. Have an organization just meeting year after day, week after week, year after year. Growing old in an organization that promised liberation but never got its liberation. Let's live out the principles of our liberations, our liberation struggles, our liberation movements. Let's live out those principles. Hope to see y'all on July the 4th in Detroit. We'll be in action after that. I don't know what will be going on afterwards. I know it's all or nothing for me. That's how it is with liberation. It's all or nothing. Are you 
the ha Harriet Tubman of today? Are you the Nat Turner of today? Are you the liberators of the past? Are you th those same ones today? Or are you those who are on the plantation telling Harriet, don't run. Master going to kill you if you run and get caught. Nat Turner, don't fight back. Just, just, be, just be cool. Keep preaching. You live a long life as a slave. We'll die as men, or we'll live as slaves. The choice is ours. I choose to live as a man or die trying, because right now I'm not a man. None of us are men. Care how big your muscles is, how big your private party is, how many children you done made, how many women you got. You're not a man if another man is dominating over you. And you can't do anything about it. Besides join our little organizations and talk a lot of stuff. Let's try to seek our manhood, brothers. Let's seek our manhood. We're not men. No, we're not. We're not men. Let's seek our man. That's what Pharaoh's job was, to destroy the man. And he has. Because a man will respond and protect what's his. A man can protect what's his. We don't even have a nation to protect what's ours. You're not a man. Let's seek our manhood so we can protect our women, our children, our posterity. And in turn, the whole world. It's all on us, brothers and sisters, the future superpower, the potential superpower as we speak. Let's make the right moves. Let's have faith in the all in all in Allah, God, Jesus, Yahweh. But have faith in the principles of self, the principles that let you know that what they are doing is wrong. Have faith in that. Have courage to back those principles up. And we're going to be free. We're going to get free because we're going to give it to ourselves. We're going to give ourselves freedom. Nobody's going to give it to us. So as we move forward, everyone, love you all. Hope to see you July the 4th. If not, support in any kind of way. We might put a link for a GoFundMe. We put a GoFundMe up and all this kind of stuff. I followed the suggestions of some people, and some of the people suggested I do it. Never even gave or even shared the GoFundMe, but it's okay. It's okay. I w I'm always one to say if we need the enemy's money to liberate us, we're in trouble anyway. I just, we just need actually the will of the people and the action, support, physical support of the people. Of your persons. Not your purse, but your persons. But if you don't want to give your persons, you're welcome to help out with your purse. But we hope you help out with your person and be here. By any means necessary, by any lawful means necessary. We're going to accomplish this. Love you all. Everybody have a blessed rest of your life. Whether you see me again or not, I want the people to know that I love you all. This is out of love for myself and love for my kind. Salute. That whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter it's a man named Ramsey Yunus claims he's taking over the city. The city. He's taking over the city. He's taking over the city. And the number one thing for freedom is nation here. Self determination. Which you have a, a right to. You have a right to self determination. You have a right to govern yourself. Okay. No man just comes to a population of people and says, Look, I'm your governor. I'm your mayor. I'm your president. You have to vote them in. They have to get power from you. That's right. But if we have power to put them in, we have power to take them out. That's right. That's right. If we have power to vote within this system, we have power to vote ourselves out of this system. That's a human right. And today we got a really, really hot topic for you guys. We're talking about what would reparations look like. And we have human rights activist Ramzu Yunus. Reparations to me 
and in international law as well, reparations is the repair of a people. Our repair is beyond monetary compensation. Some people, when we say reparations, ah, money, give us the money, show us the money. But our breaking, we've broken beyond money, we've broken away from power.